All right, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can change your dash lights to LEDs on your Ford Ranger. I chose to do red, white, and blue on mine. It was originally blue, and uh, I feel like it looks badass, and the stock green just is really ugly, so this is gonna be a tutorial video on how to properly set up LED dash lights. So these are the parts you're gonna need. Flathead, screwdriver, some pliers, any kind of sandpaper that's laying around. Um, just use what you got at your house. Not something too abrasive, but not something that's gonna take forever to take something off. Um, this is 150 grit, I believe, whatever it is. Um, funny enough, you're gonna need a fork. I'll explain that later. And you're gonna need double-sided sticky tape. And it's gonna have to be the tape that's this thin. You can't get the foam tape, you can't get any other kind of double-sided sticky tape besides this. It doesn't have to be this brand, but this kind of tape, and you'll see why later on as well. So you're also gonna need um, masking tape. Um, I would recommend getting a slimmer one, uh, and you'll also see why. <laughs> uh, but any, any, any kind of masking tape works, just not duct tape. Uh, make sure it's masking tape. And what you can do, you know, I just kind of ripped it down the middle so it didn't matter as much. So, got a ratchet, a little extension for it, then a seven millimeter socket, eight millimeter socket, and a um, 7.32 inch socket as well. Then you're gonna get your LEDs. I got my LEDs from superbrightleds.com. For the LEDs, for the dash at least, is 194s. Um, I chose to go with red, white, and blue LEDs for this truck here and you know my truck over there and it turned it looks phenomenal but um you can do whatever color you want to do so the bulbs look like these i will link them down below um i really like the super bright leds they have you know pretty decent shipping you know, very high quality product these lights are very bright and they look very good so and they're actually dimmable so that's pretty cool um but you got to do a little research on your end to figure out how many you will need. So I needed six for my dash, and then you're going to need two for the um, HVAC cluster, well, the HVAC uh, controls. And um, the HVAC controls will also possibly be a different size. So on my truck over there, the HVAC control bulbs were uh, 194 exactly like this. Um, but on this truck, for some reason, they're a different size, and I didn't actually change them out or do anything with the, the, the HVAC controller in this video. So if you want me to do that, leave a comment down below, and I'll get to it soon. But this is what it looks like all done. Looks great. Um, so what you're going to want to start to do is you get your 7 mil socket, and there's going to be four bolts. You want to take for the kick panel right here. There's one right here. Then there's gonna be two underneath the um, hood latch lever, and then the fourth right here. So once you've taken those four bolts out, you'll notice that two of them are black and two of them are kind of like almost like grade, grade eight colored, you know, kind of like that, that goldish. Uh, so the two black go underneath the latch. Um, so this is just gonna dangle here, that's okay. What you're gonna wanna do next is just pull this out. So it's got clips up top. Be careful while pulling it out. And then just set this aside for now. Then there's gonna be another metal kick panel um, on my truck, it was taken off because I had um, a stereo put in and the guy just figured it was too much of a hassle to put this back in, but I'd recommend just putting it back in. You know, never know. It's there for a reason. So I believe these are eight millimeter. Yes, they are. So you're going to want to get your eight millimeter socket and take this one, this one, and this one. So I don't know if there's supposed to be a fourth one, but... There's three on mine, so go ahead and take those three off. Now that that plate is out, um, it's just gonna fall down. Um, also, 
if you want. You can get a bigger drive ratchet. I mean, uh, yeah. And uh, this one kind of, it took a little bit of force to take those three bolts out, but it's all preference. Then there's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, five more uh, seven millimeter bolts, two underneath, so one right here, and then one right here, and then three up top. One, two, three. And then I'll show you what to do when you get those out. So these five bolts are all the same, so it doesn't matter if you mix them up. These down here, they all got their separate piles. Okay, so I almost forgot. You're gonna have to take out this mounting plate and there's gonna be two seven millimeter bolts underneath holding it in and then you'll be able to pull it out. Um, for some reason, I'm missing one on this truck, so I'm just gonna take this out. Now that you've taken the bolts out, this will be able to slide out. You just kinda wanna stick your fingers along the edges and be careful because there's wires plugged into it. You know, the stereo is usually supposed to come out too, but it's not mounted properly anyway. Now that I set that aside, um, you will be able to, oh yeah, I was also able to remove this by unplugging the cigarette lighter. Well, cigarette lighters. So, uh, do what you can, you know, work with what you got. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So, now that this is free, you can pull it off, it's just clipped in. And so, so this is kind of a tricky part. So, you're gonna need to remove this completely. And the only way to really do that is one, moving the uh, steering the steering column up and down, and then I believe you will also have to remove this as well. So it's just you can take it off with your hands. It just screws in there. So I'll have to do that in a second. And then you're also gonna have to get your keys ready and move the um, column shifter down a little bit. So I don't know if manuals, you know, work the same where you, you can move up the column shifter. I don't believe you can, but um, because you don't have the column shifter, it'll be a lot easier. So good luck. <laughs> Okay, so I waited for the dinging to stop. Uh, I was able to get it out by, you know, turning the key on, not actually starting the truck, and then shifting it all the way down to first. You know, I got parking brake on as well. Um, so, once you get the this thing out, you can kind of adjust it the way you want it. There's gonna be four bolts holding in the gauge cluster. Uh, you know, one on each corner, so one, two, three, four. And they are seven mil, so. Go ahead and remove those and I'll clip to the next one. Okay, now that you got those four bolts out, you can now move this around. So this is also a pretty tricky part. Um, yeah, keep the column shifter in first. It's probably gonna press your hazards, it's fine. <laughs> and uh, I'll record the process. I was able to remove the three plugs in the back. Is this right here? This is the the cable for the uh, column shifter indicator. So, um, okay. So I figured it out. You're gonna want to push. I don't know if you could see it from here. So there, there's the pin. You're gonna want to push the pin upwards towards the side with the cable, and then pull on the cable to pull that side out. And then once you get that side out, you're gonna wanna push inwards towards the other pin, like towards the whole column shifter itself. And then it'll slide out just like that. And then also we will be removing the face plate on this as well, because you can see it has some green in it. So you don't want green with the rest of the random colors you're gonna be putting in. So kind of tricky, but I'll show you how to get it as well column shifter is out and your truck is still dinging, you know, put it, start up the ignition again, put it back in park, you know, the highest position. You've driven your truck a little while and then you can remove your keys.
ground right here. Um, so there's gonna be some bolts around the edges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's gonna be seven bolts around the edges. Um, you have the option of using a socket or a Torx. So you're gonna wanna remove the seven golden bolts around the edge. They're coming out pretty easily. One is once, <laughs> once you uh, remove the cover, um, you can expect, inspect it for damage and it makes sense. You can see there's a crack right here, crack right here, and that's why it's all dirty on the inside. Oh, it's also cracked on the inside as well. So if you want, go ahead and pick yourself up one of these you find on eBay or how to pick apart or something. Um, now that you know how to take apart the entire interior of a Ford Ranger. But I'm just gonna leave it for now, just cause I don't wanna buy anything, I'm cheap. <laughs> okay, at this part, this is where you're gonna need to plug it back into the truck and actually start it. So you're gonna see this process really quickly and you're gonna wanna have your masking tape ready. I gave this thing a little wipe down before doing anything to it. Um, you know, since it's open, why not wipe it down? So. You're going to want to plug it back in however way works best. You don't have to put the uh, the shifter indicator, forget what it's called. Um, you don't have to put that back in, so that'll be fine. So once you plug it in, you know, I'm going to cut to that right now. All right, it's all plugged back in. Um, you're going to notice it's a lot easier to maneuver it around without the clear cover on it. So this is where you're going to want to get your um, your tape your masking tape actually more specifically, um, because we're gonna be marking where the needles are when you start the truck. So these things break off really easily. And uh, I believe this one stays on and there's a way to get it out too, but when marking the needle for uh, the Speedo, it, it always tends to be a little bit off because it sits on this little perch right here. So what you're going to want to do is get your masking tape and break off a little piece and then mark it. Mark each needle where it is. So you don't want to let the truck warm up for too long like I'm doing. But it's got a broken thermostat anyway, so it's not going to move up. So make sure to do the thermostat first. I mean the, the temp first. You taped the needles. So basically my fuel gauge was lined up with this. I used the flat edge of the tape to mark each needle. Um, with the Speedo, what you can do is just pull the Speedo needle over the, uh, the little clip right here, and um, it'll show you where it actually sits when you're going zero. So I'm sure it's probably like down here, but I just marked it up there for now because I don't really care if it's off. It has lifted tires, so when I changed it on my truck, it, ac it actually acted more realistic than it was before I did the gauges, so. So yeah, once you get this out of the truck, you're gonna want to get your fork, and this is where it's gonna make sense. Now that you got this out of the truck, you're gonna wanna grab your fork, and you're gonna wanna stick it in between the needles, being gent gentle, and gently wiggle it and pry upwards. So I figured the more you go, just wiggle it a little bit. You wanna be very careful so you don't scratch the face plates at all, because you want it to look like it was original with the LED lights. There you go, ever so slightly. Now that it's stuck in here. <laughs> Alrighty, and then you're gonna wanna do that for every single one of them. And if it comes apart like this, don't worry. You can just clip it back together. They just press fit, so no need to worry. 
Alrighty, now that that is complete, you're gonna wanna carefully take the face plates off. This is where the most damage happens. But what I figured is, well, what I figured out is slowly putting my finger underneath it helps kind of pry up the old, I don't know, whatever they use to put these together. But you kind of want to keep tension on it so you don't, you know, bend it or crease, crease these because they will crease. And I kind of just go around the edges carefully. You know, not focusing on one spot for too long. And then you see what I'm doing with my other hand. I'm pulling it to keep the tension on it. And you can see there's only one spot left. Being so careful. Sweet. And then you're going to want to see on the back side. you're gonna want to sand down these portions. So all of these are, you know, they should be a certain color, you know, turn signal and whatnot, check engine light, brights, that, that's optional if you wanna change the bright. Um, but yeah, and you know, be careful so these lines stay, you know, good and straight. And then you're gonna wanna do that for every face plate. I have no idea where that went. So, you got the face plates off. Um, what you'll notice is that if you make a mistake, you can make mistakes around the actual gauge. So, when you put it back on there, you know, it's only showing that little portion right there, that little portion right here. So, I kind of messed it up a little bit right here because it was way too sticky. And luckily, you're not going to be able to see it when you put it back together. And the same goes for all the face plates. Face plates are out. You're going to want to flip this thing over. And then you see these one, two, three, four, five, six black little things. You can use your fingers to a certain extent, but these are the bulbs. You, know, you can see they're pretty dark. They've been in the truck ever since 2000. So, um, I also recommend using pliers for this, so I'm gonna go grab my pliers. And then now. gently, I'm gonna use my foot here, gently turn these. It's okay if you break the bulb. They're old and you're replacing them anyway. All right, so the six bulbs are out. Um, if you wanted to make this a lot easier and you just wanted brighter dash lights, you could scratch all of this stuff I just did and just take the gauge cluster out, pull these things out, and then replace them with white LEDs. So it'll be like a brighter green. So, but that's not what we're doing here today. We're gonna be patriotic and we're gonna do red, white, and blue lights. So what you're gonna, gonna wanna do next I don't know if I could do this with one hand, but you're gonna to wanna to separate the bulb from the little clip here. And you're gonna to wanna to clip the new bulbs in. See, I removed these and I have my new bulbs here. I got these from superbrightleds.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, now what you're gonna to wanna to do is just put these inside of each other. So you can use whatever color you want. You know, I think the red, white, and blue looks awesome. Um, they are somewhat dimmable. It depends on the color you get. I noticed that the um, the blue and the white dims more than the red, but the red is not very, not very like, it doesn't hurt your eyes because it's red. So it doesn't really bother me that it's super bright anyway. So I'm gonna clip these all together and then we're gonna put them in order from left to right. If your bulbs still work, I recommend just to save them. Um, you never know if a buddy just needs some bulbs or something. You know, hold them around. I already got my old bulbs from my other truck and uh, so I'm gonna toss these. I didn't record it, but I sanded down the backs of the faces. So you're only gonna wanna sand this part of it. So even on the inside right here, it's still clear where it shows um, the temperature little icon. Um, 
And then the red is on the outside, so don't gotta worry too much about that. Um, on the main face plate, um, it's gonna be green all along the miles per hour, but it's not gonna be green on the um, kilometers per hour. So where it says kilometers per hour right here, or in the middle right there, all the numbers, uh, you won't need to sand those down, so save yourself the time. But you will wanna sand down the little mile per hour mile per hour uh it's covered right here but you can kind of see it the mile per hour symbol right here that will be green as well but just make sure you replicate it like that same goes for this all the same it's time consuming but you know you grab your sandpaper and just break off a little piece of it and then it'll make it a lot easier so what you're going to want to do now is grab your double-sided sticky tape and grab your cluster get it ready and you're going to want to put little pieces of tape along where it's not going to cover an icon you know even if it is clear tape i don't want to risk making it look weird by any means so i usually tape it like up here over here and then like a little bit down here or something like that so once you put it on you know, make sure it's lined up perfectly and then just place it on carefully so i will cut to when i finish that So you're going to want to grab your cluster and then you're going to want to hook it back up, put all the wires back in it and get your needles ready. So what you're going to do now is plug it in and start the truck up and then you're going to place the needles back to where they were. So the portion where you can test out the lights to make sure they work so click them on and as you can see they do work you can see the red in there white and the blue good to go start the truck make sure your parking brakes on and then you're gonna grab your needles and do the, uh, the temperature first and just place these in place. What I figured out that works for me is to hold the needle with my right hand and then place it with my left hand. So um, if you turn these even just like a tiny bit, when you, when you put them on, put the needle on, it's just gonna turn back to a different position. So holding the needle where it's supposed to be and then slowly but carefully putting it back on little pins will make it a lot easier for you. Alrighty, I put them all back on. Uh, you're gonna want to make sure you don't push them too far tight, like you push them too far on, uh, because then they won't really adjust to where they're supposed to be. So just do this with all of them. Make sure that they, they go back to their position. And then you're good to go to remove this. We'll turn off the truck and then remove the whole cluster again, take the tape off of it, and then put the clear cover back on. So we're gonna cut to doing that right now. All right, well, we are all finished up. Dash lights are done and look amazing. 
I'm very happy with how they turned out. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, maybe any way to do things easier, let me know. Um, you know, just leave it down in the comments. And luckily, we were only left with one bolt after the job. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I just didn't put these bolts, well, I didn't put the middle bolt and the bolt right there back in because uh, the plastic is so weak that it broke where the bolt actually mounts to this black plastic piece. So the bolt's just going straight through and it's not doing anything. So I only put one bolt right here where it didn't break. So it's totally normal. It happened on my truck as well. So, but if you have any questions, let me know. Should be good to go.